Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Pravino. For those who are new to my channel, today is the beginning of a new series where I'm going to take you through the fundamentals of Blender and 3D animation. If you have any question, you can drop in the comment below if you don't belong to my WhatsApp group. So let's jump right to it. First thing first, you want to download Blender if you don't already have it. To download Blender, go to www.blender.org. On the Blender website, you can find the latest version, which is 2.92. But you can get along if you have nothing lower than 2.80. Once downloaded, locate the file and install it. Launch Blender once installation is complete. Once you launch Blender, you get this dialog, and what you want to do is press outside of it. Now we have three things in our viewport by default. This is the viewport. This is where a lot of things will be happening. In the 3D viewport, we have a cube. If you left click, you can select it. You can see the name right here and also in the outliner. This is the light as you can see here and in the outliner. Also, the camera. Here is the outliner and it gives us a list of what we have in our 3D viewport. In the outliner, here we have a collection that we can collapse and review to show the list of objects we have in our 3D viewport. Currently, we only have one but we can create as many as possible. Here we have the menu bar and also the ready-made screen to the right or can be called preset screen that you can choose from. Let's talk more about this later. Here is another bar called option bar. The option changes when the selected tool changes. Here we have the tool shape or tool bar. If you click any of this now, you can see the options we have in the option bar changing. Hide and unveil the toolbar by pressing T as in 2 on your keyboard. Here we can turn on the screencast so you can see whatever I press on my keyboard down here. If I press N as a number, I can also review another transform panel. If I click my cube and right click, I have more options. Here at the top we have 6 options. Currently we are in object mode. But we have edit mode, sculpt mode, etc. In the next few videos, we will talk about the first three modes. The last three we will be talking about in the future. To navigate or orbit in your 3D viewport, you need to press to press and hold Alt plus left mouse button and drag to navigate. To pan, press and hold Shift plus Alt then drag. You can do that in the gizmo at the top corner of your screen. If you left click and drag, you can orbit the 3D viewport. To pan, left click and drag on the palm that you can see at the top right corner of your screen. To zoom in and out, you can use your mouse wheel button. If you don't have a mouse and you have synaptic touchpad installed on your laptop, then you can zoom in and out with two fingers on your computer touchpad, I mean your computer mouse. Just place those two fingers and drag up and down. You can also do that in the viewport with this little icon. Click and drag to zoom in and out. Click this camera icon to see your object through the camera. Remember, we have camera in our scene. If you press it again, you can leave the camera view. If your computer have a number pad, you can do that by pressing 0. If you don't have a number pad, use the setup button in front of 1 on your keyboard and then choose camera view. Click again to leave the camera view. I will explain other options soon. We have three axes in our 3D viewport, which are X, Y, and Z axes, like in the real world. If I press 1 or use the Tida button and then 1, I will be in front view. If I press 3, that will be the right view, and if I press 7, I will be in the top view. Those are the three dimensions we have. Right now, we are in the front view, and if I press Ctrl 1, Blender will take us to the back view, which is the opposite of front. Press Ctrl 3, and that will be the left view, which is the opposite of right view. The same thing, the top view and bottom view. The orthographic view gives you this grid, and perspective gives you a real-life experience of how you view things. You can toggle between orthographic and perspective with 5 on your number pad. Let's quickly talk about each of these options we have in the tool field or toolbar. The first one which can be selected with W as hotkey or you click on it on the screen. 
This is used to select object with different options. First is the boss selection tool. You can select part of the object in our screen by left clicking and drag the amount of object you want to select. If you press anywhere in the screen, you can deselect. Also, we have a circle selection. This allows you to paint an area you wish to select. Left click and paint across the object you intend to select. The last one here is the lasso selection tool. This allows you to freely draw to select the object you want. You can draw to select all freely. Next is the cursor. You can drag the cursor to anywhere you like. Wherever the cursor is, is where your object will appear if you had a new object. To take the cursor back to the original position, press Shift S and choose cursor to word origin. Currently, the cursor is in the word origin, but I am going to move it along the Y axis to demonstrate what happens. Press Shift A and add a cube. You will see that the cube appears where we have our 3D cursor. To snap the cursor back to the word origin, press Shift S and choose cursor to word origin. Next, we have the manipulators. The first one is a move manipulator. For instance, click and drag the red arrow to move the object in X axis. Same can be done with green and blue, that is Y and Z. To snap the object back to its original position, press Alt G. That will reset the location of the object. The next one is the rotation manipulator. It works the same way with the move manipulator. You can click and drag any of these three to rotate in a specific direction. Next is the scale manipulator. Click and drag to scale your object in a particular axis. The fourth one is a combination of these three above. You can scale, move, and rotate at the same time with this single manipulator. Here is annotation. This can be used to draw on your 3D viewport. This is the measurement tool. You can measure from one point to another just by clicking and drag. From that point to this point is 30 meters, and now we have 9.8 meters. Let's talk more about the manipulators. First, the move tool. You can press G to grab and move around. You can specify X, Y, or Z, Z axis to move the object in only one axis. To do that, press G, then X. You should be able to move only in X axis. Do the same for Y and Z. G is to grab, R is to rotate, S is to scale. Press any of these letters plus X or Y or Z to manipulate them in a specific direction. If you notice, there is a little box here. If I click on it and drag, that means I'm moving my object in all directions except the direction you have selected. That is, if you select red, you are moving your object in X and Y axis while excluding X. If blue is selected, then you are moving in all directions except in Z axis, which is blue. Press Alt R or G or S to reset the rotation, location and scale. Your queue will go back to its original setting. If I press N and go to item, while your cube is selected, you can see location, rotation and scale. And you can change this value just like the manipulators did. Click and drag to change the value for each of them. As I drag and change the value, if you look at the, your 3D viewport, you can see that your object is transforming. Also, you can easily type in a value to give you a specific size, etc. This will be all for today. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel as a support. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.